her killer should never have been allowed into the country. What happened to Emily on that fateful evening and how did it escape the watchful eyes of a town? I do. Yes, and the knife. Where innocence and play are the heart of life. Just try to promote mental health awareness. A story unfolded that touched the hearts of many people. This is the story of Emily Jones, a young, happy girl whose life was cut short. Let's discuss what happened to this little girl. Emily Grace Jones was born in Bolton on January 18, 2013, to Sarah and Mark Jones. Jones. Mark worked as a credit manager and Sarah was a solicitor. Emily, their only child, was known for her joy and laughter, and her heart was as big as her smile. She loved outdoor activities and sports, fearlessly engaging in hiking, climbing, swimming, and horse riding. Mark described his daughter as a sociable, outgoing daredevil, while her teacher noted her creativity, popularity, and hard work in school. Despite their separation, Mark and Sarah maintained a good relationship and co-parented Emily. On Sunday, March 22, 20 2020, they planned to meet in Queen's Park. On that special day, Mother's Day, Emily had a bright smile as she handed her mom a lovingly made card. The park was alive with laughter and the sound of children playing. Emily, full of energy, zipped around on her scooter. Suddenly, she spotted her mom, Sarah, jogging in the distance. Excited, she steered her scooter towards her, eager for a hug. But in a shocking twist, as Emily raced towards her mom, a stranger stepped out of nowhere, heading straight for her. This unexpected turn took a peaceful Mother's Day in the park to a heart-stopping moment. The joyous day turned into one of alarm and disbelief, marking a tragic turn in their lives. On that fateful day, Mark's heart raced as he thought Emily had simply taken a tumble from her scooter. But in a terrifying instant, he realized the unimaginable truth his little girl had been stabbed. The air around them filled with cries of shock from the people in the park. The attacker, still holding the knife, quickly walked away from the situation she had caused. Mark's mind raced as he dashed to Emily's side. Seeing her there with a serious wound on her neck, struggling for every breath was a bad time to come to life. He felt a cold wave of fear. The park's joyful noises turned into a blur of panic and confusion. And if you're finding this video interesting, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. During the incident, a nurse who was in the park sprang into action, trying desperately to help Emily. It wasn't long before the sound of sirens filled the air. The emergency services arrived, moving quickly and doing everything they could could to save Emily. But, despite their few actions and the nurse's brave efforts, the situation took a heartbreaking turn. Of a seven-year-old girl killed by an asylum seeker is entitled to feel her killer should never have been allowed into the country. Emily Jones was attacked as she scooted through a Bolton Park on Mother's Day in 2020. Emily, so full of life just moments before, tragically didn't make it. The park, once a place of laughter and play, became a scene of sorrow and loss. Tony Canty, who saw everything, didn't hesitate. He bravely ran after the attacker, not even sure if she had a weapon. Meanwhile, his wife quickly gave him a cloth to try and stop Emily's bleeding. Tony kept chasing the assailant, Ilona Skarner. Finally, his his courage paid off. He caught up with her and held her until the police arrived. Thanks to Tony's quick action, Ilona was soon in the hands of the police. What's in your backpack? ID and everything. ID? Yes, and the knife. And a knife. And a knife. <laughs> Ilona Skarna's life story was too sad with many dark turns. What's your name? Eltiona Skarna. Eltiona Skarna. Okay. Where do you live? Uh, 19 Turnstone Road. 19 Turnstone? Yes. Born in Albania in February 1990, she faced tough times from the start. She was trapped in a marriage she didn't choose. Skana also battled with her mind. She struggled with serious mental health issues, including schizophrenia, which made her see and believe things that weren't real. In 2014, hoping for a fresh start, Ilona Skana made a big move to the UK. She was seeking a safe place, a new home. But even in this new land, her mental health problems followed her like a shadow. She had episodes that were scary and confusing. The doctors tried to help her with treatments, but Skarna didn't always follow their advice. She sometimes didn't take her medicine or go to her appointments. It was a tough time for her, filled with ups and downs, as she tried to find her way through the challenges of her mind. But on Mother's Day, something scary was about to happen. Ilona Skarna bought some crafting knives, but she wasn't planning to make crafts. She had a dangerous plan in her mind. Soon after, Ilona Skarna was caught and faced serious charges. She was accused of murder and having a knife that she shouldn't yeah. have had. Uh, and the judge um, sentenced her, as you say, to be uh, detained under uh, 
Section 45A of the Mental Health Act. She has been imprisoned for life with a minimum of eight years. But then things took a different turn. People learned that Skana had problems with her mental health. The court decided to change her charge from murder to manslaughter. They thought her mental health issues played a big part in what she did. On December 8, 2020, Skana was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term initially set at eight years. Breaking news in a woman who killed seven-year-old Emily Jones in a park in Bolton in March has been sentenced to life in prison. Despite her mental illness, Skana was deemed to have a significant amount of responsibility for her crime. So, instead of going to a regular prison, Skana was sent to a special hospital. This place was made to help people with mental health problems. Here, she would start serving her life sentence in a place where she could also get help. Skana's sister, who said that she was very unwell in the days and weeks leading up to the attack on seven-year-old Emily. She'd been complaining of hearing voices in her head. Now, her sister told the inquest that there had been previous incidents of violence where she'd tried to attack her and her mother and there'd also been times where she'd been found with a knife outside screaming. She'd also displayed other concerning behaviour including cutting pipes to a boiler and her sister Clistora said it was like living uh, like a horror movie living with her. Emily's passing was a huge shock for her family and everyone who knew her. It was so sudden and sad that it left everyone feeling lost and heartbroken. Her school, where she was loved by so many, couldn't forget her bright smile and the happy times they shared. They wanted to keep her memory alive, so they came up with special ways to remember her. One of the most beautiful things they did was create a memorial garden. It was a peaceful place where people could go and think about Emily, surrounded by flowers and the beauty of nature. They also started raising money to help other kids. This way, Emily's kind spirit would keep helping others, even though she was no longer with them. Emily's parents, heartbroken by their loss, turned their sorrow into action. It's, it's a real, it's been a real, dist m most distressing part of everything is listening to these so-called experts that are just completely different opinions on, and no one really understood, as far as I'm concerned, the threat that the perpetrator posed. They knew they couldn't bring Emily back, but they wanted to make sure no other family had to go through what they did. They started working hard to make changes in how people with mental health problems are cared for. They wanted to make sure that everyone who needed help got it so that what happened to Emily wouldn't happen to anyone else. Their love for Emily drove them to try to make the world a better and safer place. Try and do our best and, you know, and in, in Emily's, so Emily's death is, doesn't go in vain. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep plugging away, right? Just try to promote mental health awareness and the dangers of relapse and not monitoring mental health. In the world of life stories, stories like Emily Jones stand as reminders of both the joy and happiness of life. Her story, while heartbreaking, also highlights the strength and compassion of communities in times of distress. Share your thoughts or any personal experiences on this story in the comments sections. Thank you for watching and please let us know what interesting story you'd like to see next. Stay safe and stay informed.